you did yesterday, or sometimes it's even 10 years ago. I'll get nailed and he'll say, do you remember what you said to that guy? Do you remember what you did? You know, and it's 10, 15 years ago. And I go, oh, no. <laughs> and then I'll think, that's all gone. That's yesterday's. My life is all in the future. It's all tomorrow's. Don't let him trap you into thinking yesterday matters. Amen? Amen. It doesn't. It's gone. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's what the scriptures say. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It's got to be all brand new. Okay? Next thing. It says in birth, certainty is expected. So when you pick up a baby, that baby is there. Amen? Okay? Putting it in another way, Will Rogers went in to get his passport one time. Everybody know who Will Rogers is? Kind of a, okay, this, this doesn't have any relationship then. You don't even know who he is. Okay, so Will Rogers, it doesn't matter who it is, uh, went in to get a, birth, uh, a uh, passport, and the guy on the other side of the table said, uh, well, I need to see your birth certificate. And Will Rogers said, why? Can't you see I'm here? You know? And so the truth of the matter is that in a spiritual birth, certainty has got to be there. People need to be able to look at you and say, oh, that guy's a Christian. Yeah? By his deeds, by his words, by his actions. I watched him because when he sat down to, to eat the other day, he was all by himself and he bowed his head and prayed and thanked God for his food in the restaurant. I haven't seen anybody do that for a while. Wow, that was cool, you know? He treated the lady at the desk really nice. And, and by the way, I'm always really, really careful to do that when I check into a hotel in a town where I've got to preach the next morning, because I never know who's going to show up, you know? But I'm kidding about that, but aren't we in the same boat every day? How we treat people at City Market? how we treat people when we're getting gas, how we treat people when we're driving down the road, how we treat a waitress. I mean, waitresses are working for a living. You know, treat them nice. Say hi to them. Look them in the eye. Don't just say, oh, I want this, I want that, like they're your servant. They're not. They're working for a job just like you are. Well, some of you are. Some of you don't have jobs right now. I, I don't even know you, but I can guess. I mean, it's tough right now. Amen? Amen. It's tough. And we need, to, we need to allow God to take care of us in these tough times. God is not Santa Claus. I didn't put that up there. God is not Santa Claus. But Santa Claus, Santa Claus looks over the list and sees who's naughty and nice. Amen? Because if you're naughty, you get the cold, and if you're nice, you get the good stuff. God's not like that. God is not Santa Claus, folks. God loves you in spite of who you are. God loves you knowing who you are. God gave His Son, Jesus, to die a horrible death on the cross and be raised up again knowing you and how you'd booger up your life. 2,000 years later, He knew you. And he loves you anyway. Isn't that cool? Where else can you find that? You can't. You can't. If one small part of your salvation and your relationship to God depends upon you, you can give it up right now. It doesn't work. If one small part of your works depends on you and what you do of your relationship with God you'll never know whether you ever did enough that's pretty scary but there are religions all over the world that your salvation and your relationship with God depends on you and what you do 
Guys, it's not what you do. It's who you are. And I'm a child of the king. Say, so, doesn't matter what I do. It's who I am that's really the key. Isn't that cool? I love that. I love that because that means that I can, I can, I can work with joy. I can be God's joyful child without worrying about all the extemporaneous junk. Whether I'm doing enough, whether I'm being the right person, whether I'm, you know, and then I start to fake it. You know, if I'm not doing it, then I fake it. Remember when I was a little kid in Sunday school and you had to bring your Bible and they always took down and said, how many chapters did you read? I mean, I was only in eight, eight, eight years old or something like that. So during the opening thing of Sunday school, I'd rip it open to a psalm and I'd read a whole bunch of short little chapters, you know, so that I could say, oh, I read 15 chapters this week. See? Well, we fake it that way. And that's no good. We are a child of the king. Now I want to share with you just a couple more. See, I'm already over time, but that doesn't matter to you, does it? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm really sorry. Um, but I, I want to share with you just some evidences of your salvation experience. If you'd give me, just give me about three to five more minutes or 25 or something like that. Okay. So evidence is my new birth is, first of all, if we keep his commandments. None of us can keep all of God's commandments. If we keep the commandments, we wouldn't have needed Jesus. Okay? Okay? So, so there's no way that I can do it. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus died, rose again, and lives in me, and he's the one that keeps the commandments. He kept them. And that's what God sees. He sees Jesus. He doesn't see all of me, but that doesn't let me off the hook. What John is actually saying here is that if you call yourself a Christian and you're not steering by God's commandments, and if you're habitually living a sinful life with no conviction, no contrition, no disquietude, then don't call yourself a Christian because you're probably not. 